Welcome back to Binary Wonder. Today we're going to do an assembly language program using the Epix Fastload cartridge. So welcome back guys. We're going to be looking at Epix Fastload cartridge, which looks like this for the Commodore 64. And if you didn't know much about the uh, Epix Fastload cartridge, it was developed in 1984, uh, significantly sped up the transfer of files between the 1541 disk drive and the Commodore primarily through software obviously this isn't going to hardware modify anything about the transfer it's all done through software and what's actually interesting about this cartridge even though it's called fast load we're actually going to be looking at the uh, machine language capabilities within that cartridge today specifically we're going to um, kind of give you just a brief overview of the menus involved in fast load uh, but we're actually not going to do any of the fast load features in this video we're going to primarily look at the machine language monitor and uh, write a simple machine language program by hand since this cartridge does not include an assembler uh, and we'll actually put in the op codes and uh, and do the work by hand directly into memory so I think you'll enjoy it so here when you start up the Commodore 64, you can enter the pound symbol and you get the first menu. You can see the various menu options. Under file utility, this is where you can lock files and do other sort of sorts of operations. Going back to the basic prompt, the dollar sign will immediately load what's on the disk and you can do the slash in the file name and actually load the files very quickly. And you can see that it loaded. I did a very simple basic program. And if you do run Commodore run stop combination, it'll load and run that program. So it's a very handy command. So as we look at the machine language monitor, you can do the exclamation point to enter the monitor. You can enter the hex address with the asterisk and it'll show you it'll just dump out some memory if you do the L for list it'll actually disassemble into the op codes what's lo located there so as we go ahead and try to create our own assembly language program we're just going to list out what's at 800 which is the beginning of basic in the Commodore 64 memory map and there's nothing there as you can see we're gonna start at 0801 we're gonna type in the A9 op code and 48 A9 is load A so load the A register with hex value 48 which is actually the ASCII character H and then 0803 is the next open slot we're going to do opcode 20 which is jump subroutine and then d2ff which is really ffd2 in the low byte high byte order and that's basically going to that's the kernel memory location to print out a character so 0806 is the next available we're going to do another a9 for a load a we're going to do 49 which is the ASCII character I and you can see now it's loaded here we're gonna do another 20 JSR opcode again D2FF and we'll talk about more about that sort of memory location here in a moment and you can see now we've got multiple JSRs and now what we're gonna do is we're going to do another load A, this time with a carriage return. Zero D is the carriage return character. And if we disassemble it, you can see that it's there. We're going to do a jump subroutine 20 opcode again to print that carriage return at 08 OD memory location and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put a return to subroutine in 0810 we're going to override that 
JSR opcode that's already there. And we're going to put in opcode 60, which in 6502 processor is a return to subroutine. So now you can see our full program here, all the way up to 0810G for go. We're going to immediately go to that memory location and it prints high and then returns back. So that's a very simple assembly language program. Another interesting feature with this fast load cartridge is if you put in uh, some value and then equals, it'll convert it. So you can see FF2D, FFD2 is 65490 in decimal, and then it also gives you the binary representation and then the actual character, if there is one. E000, E1000 is the beginning of the kernel ROM memory location, and FFFF is obviously the end of memory. So uh, the kernel actually resides in about the upper 8K of memory. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and check out my other videos.